I raced motocross ever since I was eight years old. You know, I was diehard about racing dirt bikes all the way through high school. Got on a race team, started racing the nationals and supercross, but it didn't really fit my image. I, I didn't really fit in with the race scene. Too many rules, and, and they wanted you to be a certain way. And, just didn't feel like that was me. I said, I'm gonna start a new sport. You know, me and a couple buddies got together, started doing tricks and getting it filmed. Growing up, I was always in the jumping. Like, when I would go out to the practice track, I'd always just want a session of jumps, and my dad get mad at me, tell me to stop showing off and go run how to race the corners. He's like, you ain't gonna win no races hitting them jumps. And they wanted to just go have fun. And it was, it was fun, it was exciting, and I remember standing in the desert and watching these bikes fly overhead. It was like nothing I'd ever seen. I thought they were gonna kill themselves. It was so perfect because it just was a sport built on character image and that's what we were all about. We weren't a number, we were actually a person, you know, and that's what we really wanted to stress in freestyle. At the center of the emerging freestyle movement was a group of riders known as the Metal Militia. Founders Brian Deegan and Larry Link Ogle were joined early on by Ronnie Feist and Jeremy Stenberg. This is a group of guys with no rules and a lot of points to prove and we were out to make a name fast. The more jacked up you could be and the more people we'd piss off, we thought it was funny. Like we would just do stupid stuff because it would entertain us. They always had the reputation of you know, destruction and mayhem and it was sweet, it was a whole different deal. Like it wasn't the dorky poindexter racer image. I think we got off on the wrong foot with a lot of people. People thought all types of crazy stuff about us. People would just judge on us, you know? A bunch of white kids tatted up with bald heads. Thought we were gangs, people thought we were white supremacists. And I'm like, man, look at me. Oh, I got Asian tattoos. <laughs> Listen to hip hop every day. Yeah, I look like a white supremacist. And then the logo is a skull with an army helmet on it, and people were like, oh, that's a Nazi helmet. It was kind of a bad image we were getting for just being these rebel dudes. There's a lot of people who saw us as a negative thing. We were so tight, though, it didn't really matter to us. We, all we cared about was our group, and we backed it up with results. You know, that's the thing. We weren't just out there talking, we were winning events. The militia's success and popularity helped fuel the rise of freestyle motocross. Once considered the black sheep of dirt bikes, freestyle has become a legitimate part of the action sports scene. I think in the beginning, a lot of people were like, oh, they're the guys that couldn't make it in motocross. They're all the dudes just wanted to party and didn't want to take it serious. So they went over there and did their own thing. And it's like, now I think if the sport's grown so big and the tricks have gotten so difficult, you have to be straight, treat it just like you're a motocross racer now. You have to wake up five days a week, be on your bike, go to bed early. I would say my career started as a serious guy racing the circuit. Well, I came back to almost full circle. We're back on the series and doing events and contests, but it's done our way now. We did what everyone told us we couldn't do. And as the sport evolved over the last decade, so did the metal militia. Things started to change with the militia, I think, when people started making some real money with riding freestyle and having more people involved than just yourself. And mainly started changing when dudes started having kids and growing up, you know? You gotta grow up sometime. You can't just be a punk forever. People say, oh yeah, you sold out. I'm like, all right, we're not hardcore anymore. Well, doing backflips on a dirt bike all day long with your boys, that's pretty hardcore to me. The average hardcore dude is kind of like the rebel dude who gets in fights and does drugs and parties and that. That's easy. <laughs> that stuff's easy to do. Being hardcore is committing yourself to a sport and being the best. Now it's real. It's like back then everybody was just kind of running wild, doing whatever they wanted and everyone's finding themselves. I think now everyone's grown up and everyone's comfortable with themselves and respects each other. I think Metal Militia is a bigger movement than a lot of the Metal Militia guys realize. We pretty much are the most known group in action sports, so I think we're making a pretty big dent, and it is pretty prestigious to be in our group now. World domination, that was our quote. That's us, we want to dominate our world, action sports. Well, we've done it, and we're gonna keep doing it for a long time.